New health revelations coming to light about Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein. Her office confirming to Armanu Raju that the senator suffered complications from her long bout with shingles, complications including encephalitis, which is an inflammation of the brain. Senator Feinstein this afternoon first denied having encephalitis and said it was just the flu, but her office then confirmed that she did indeed have encephalitis. This is the 89-year-old senator facing, is facing increasing questions about her mental fitness and ability to serve as a senator. Senator Feinstein, senator Feinstein do you still feel like you're fit to serve? What do you think about calling for you to resign? Ms. Pelosi, are you working for her office now? I mean, it's painful to watch that. Manu Raju is out front. Manu, what more are you learning tonight? Yeah, you, there has not been much information coming from Senator Feinstein or her office in the aftermath of her contracting shingles back in February. She was gone for several months. She returned, there's, and she has said very little about everything that happened. But then the revelation that she did uh, get encephalitis in addition to the Ramsey Hunt syndrome, two complications that came from the result of shingles. She initially denied that, said that she was a case of the bad flu. A bad flu. And then she, her office later confirmed that that indeed she had broader health complications. And in talking to senators when asked about whether or not they believe she is fit to serve, they sidestepped the question. Do you have confidence that she can continue to do how, this rigorous job? We're all human and we all have health issues. And right now she is performing as a United States Senator, doing her job. Are well, you worried about her ability to do her job? Uh, I, I can't answer that. I, I, well, let me, because I don't know. Well, I have confidence in her judgment and her, her family's judgment and her staff's judgment. Now, questions about Senator Feinstein have persisted for several years. She was slated to become the first woman to chair the Senate Judiciary Committee. She essentially was pushed aside by top Democrats who were concerned yeah. about her ability to do that. And she could have been the first female to be the president pro tem of the Senate, meaning the most senior member of the Senate, someone who's in line in the presidential succession. She did not take that position and allowed Patty Murray to become the president pro tem instead, all because of these health issues that came even before the this recent bout of shingles. All right, Manu, what about the question that we heard there in that exchange where someone asked uh, Ms. Pelosi if she was working for Feinstein's office, which was referring to the woman that has been by a Feinstein's side uh, all the time, it seems, recently. Nancy Pelosi's eldest daughter uh, also seemed, uh, also named Nancy, I should say. Nancy Kareen Prouda is her name. She has been by Feinstein's side since returning to the Senate. Do you, what do you know about their relationship, Manu? Yeah, there have been, uh, it was an interesting development learning about this in the recent days. Uh, she is someone, the Pelosi's and the Feinsteins have been very close over the years, coming through San Francisco politics. Their office says this is a, per, a personal relationship, not a political one, and this is why uh, the, the former speaker's daughter, eldest daughter, is working with her, essentially working as a caretaker of sorts. But it has also raised some political questions as well. Nancy Pelosi is uh, supporting Adam Schiff to be the next senator from California to replace Dianne Feinstein. If Feinstein were to resign, then Gavin Newsom, the governor, has said that he would appoint a black woman to the post. If he, he were to do that, perhaps that could make shake up the Senate race there, maybe make Schiff's bid for the Senate see, Senate more difficult. Now, yeah. Pelosi's office denies that's the case, but those are the questions that are swirling around Dianne Feinstein and her future. Certainly. Yeah. All right. And, and adds a fascinating wrinkle to it. Manu, thank you. I want to go now to our chief medical correspondent, Dr. Sanjay Gupta. I mean, Dr. Gupta, look, let's just be honest. This is something that really has captivated the country. People want to understand what's going on here. And obviously, yeah. you're a neurosurgeon. Let's just start with this latest news on, on encephalitis, which they said, you know, she didn't have and then said, in fact, she had. How serious could encephalitis be and what does it do to a brain? Well, it can be very serious. I mean, it's, it's inflammation of the brain, the whole brain. I mean, people often have heard the term meningitis, and I'll just show you here quickly, Aaron. Yeah. Meningitis is an inflammation of the outer layers of the brain. 
uh, with encephalitis, you're talking about the brain itself. And it can um, be a challenging diagnosis, I will tell you, to make. Uh, they, they had suspicion probably because of her shingles initially. And then she probably had symptoms, uh, you know, which can be a little bit vague in the beginning, but things like fever, uh, it could be neck ache, sensitivity to light. But then it can go into mental confusion and seizures. And it can be, again, a challenging diagnosis. You get MRI scans. You may even have to do a lumbar puncture to find out. But it can be serious if, if it's not treated. It can resolve as well. And a lot of the, the sort of uh, more acute symptoms, if you will, fever and pain and things like that, headache, they can go away. But you could be left with, with um, mental confusion, difficulties with memory. And she's 89 years old. So, you know, all of that is amplified in someone who is that old as well, Erin. No, certainly. And as you say, those things uh, are not the ones that necessarily go away. So these are, these are serious considerations. Right. So now the senator's office is saying while her encephalitis has resolved, and obviously to, to what you just said, we don't know exactly what that means uh, fully. But they also say she continues to have complications from something called Ramsey-Hunt syndrome. What is Ramsey-Hunt syndrome? Yeah, well, this is another sort of uh, consequence, that a rare one, but a consequence of shingles sometimes. So both encephalitis and Ramsey-Hunt could be a result of her initial shingles. What, what this is, and you may have heard of shingles. A lot of people have heard of shingles. Yeah. Basically, if you've had chicken pox as a kid, the virus that causes chicken pox may not go away. It stays inside your body, and then at some point as an adult, it gets reactivated. Uh, we don't and really know why. Um, and, and, and in this case, it could have been re reactivated for all sorts of different reasons, but it affects that nerve. We just showed it there on the screen for a second. It's the facial nerve. That's the yellow uh, sort of uh, lines you see on someone's face there. It can affect all those nerves. People's faces may essentially become paralyzed as a result of that. They may develop lesions even in their ear, along their face, in their eye. She was complaining about her eyes. The lesions could be inside the mouth. It can be really painful. Uh, people who've had shingles will oftentimes describe the pain that they have with that. Imagine that, Aaron, on your face. Now, it can also resolve, um, but it can take a while. How quickly was it diagnosed? Did she get antivirals? Was she given steroids? Those are the types of things that can actually make it go away quicker. People often compare it to Bell's palsy, which is similar, yes. but Ramsey Hunt is often more serious and is less likely to resolve completely. Uh, well, these things are all I mean, it's very important to understand it and, of course, uh, incredibly serious and, and, and frightening, I'm sure. All right, thank you yeah. very much, Sanjay. You got it. Thank you. All right, well, this is coming as Senator Feinstein is facing growing calls from fellow Democrats to step down. So what do the voters in California think? Kyung Law is out front in San Francisco, which is Feinstein's hometown. I was mayor of San Francisco for nine years. Senator Dianne Feinstein conducting normal business didn't change concerns at home about her health. And anything we can do to help, I think we should. After these images earlier this week that stunned San Francisco native Tom Benton. Just sadness, I think, first and foremost. Shocked to some degree at, um, at how frail she seems. Benton of progressive group Indivisible helped organize this open letter to Senator Feinstein, signed by activists across California, asking her to resign to focus on her health. Benton had voted for Feinstein for decades. He'd witnessed her ascent from the first female mayor of San Francisco to the first woman California sent to the U.S. Senate, a trailblazer who Benton says needs to pass the torch. Why would anybody wish that on a man or a woman? Why would anybody feel that it's their right to be in that kind of distress? That's the kind of um, dignified end to a career that, that you would want. I don't understand that. Aging and ending a career are often private decisions. But in public service, that's not always a choice. I'm announcing that I will not be a candidate for re-election to Congress in 2022. It's time for me to come home. That's former California Congresswoman Jackie Speer, who retired in 2022. She believes Feinstein is facing an unfair amount of scrutiny. I think there is a fair amount of misogyny in this case. I think that there is this willingness to look at women and judge them differently. I think it's a personal decision to resign. She's already made the personal decision to retire. Is it a personal decision if taxpayers are paying for your job? If she's doing her job, 
I don't think there's a question here. Spear chose to retire not due to age or health, but she says to spend time with her husband. Spear has said one way to fix a problem in Washington is a mandatory retirement age. But until that happens, Spear says of her former colleague, that should be Feinstein's choice. Having said that you think there should be an age limit, should that apply in this case? I said that there is a time for all of us when um, we, our level of acuity is not as it once was. That's a, an evaluation that each member makes. Now, having spoken to a lot of people who either know Diane Feinstein, who've worked for her in this city, or who are represented by her, they say that this is about more than age. This is actually about more than Diane Feinstein's legacy. And this is a city that has admired her and really, truly cares about that legacy, Aaron. They are really concerned about the business of the Senate and the representation of this state of 39 million people. Aaron. All right, Kyung, thank you. A lot to think about. Interesting Jackie's arguments there.